Hey, time to shine today. Podcast varsity squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I have a fun conversation with my good friend Doreen Rivers, or friends call her River. And she grew up literally an explorer. Her father is a world renowned explorer. And not only did she do that and go chase the rapids, chase the wilderness, but she also was a doctor. She put time into academics and she really gets into how important academics can be for your growth during our conversation. She talks about experiences and how she wants everybody else to have her kind of experiences. And if they're looking for a way to do that through growing a business, then they have to get a hold of River over at Alpha 81. She authored an awesome book that I have a giveaway at the end. It's called Brain to Bank. And I loved it. I devoured it. It helped me in my creative writing, everything across the board with regards to helping me build my coaching business, helping other people build theirs. So without further ado, here's my really good friend, Dr. Doreen Rivers or River. Let's level up. Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I got my awesome sauce friend, Miss Dr. Doreen Rivers, but I just call her River. That's what she allows friends to call her. And she actually just scaled Mount Kilimanjaro earlier this summer. And we just had a really fun talk off the air about how she pushed through. She didn't get the elevation sickness that a lot of people do. And I just think that that's uber impressive. Uh, and River is... She grew up in the North and South American rivers, rafting wild whitewater rapids, basking in the sun, and sleeping under a canopy of brilliant constellations. River has an undergraduate degree in creative writing, a PhD in business management, so she's a smarty, investment banking and general contractor license, and a few other degrees and certifications in between. She's the CEO of Alpha 81 Inc., an Arizona-based firm successfully supporting corporate innovations, expansions, and exits in software technology medical, life, health sciences, education, and other industries. Her everyday model of living is based on Helen Keller's quote, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. And she has also authored a fantastic book, which if you're watching Vimeo or YouTube, Brain to Bank, which I will have a free book giveaway at the end of this. And Dr. Doreen or Dr. River, or just River, thank you so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today podcast for our squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? It's blue, and it's blue. because it's the color of the sky and water, and those are infinite. Yes, and it's very cool, I, and it's relaxing, and I'm actually looking at it through my little window over here at the Atlantic Ocean, so I can't, can't complain. I got to love the blue. So let's get to the roots of you. I mean, you, you live kind of, a, I don't want to call it a vagabond lifestyle, but kind of like a free lifestyle growing up. If you're kind of living in the North of South America on the rivers and kind of hitting the rapids and stuff like that. Is that where it kind of started or was there a time before that? My dad was a world explorer and he went all over the world exploring not only river, rivers, but like Mayan ruins in Colombia. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about machetes going through the jungle and, and exploring Mayan ruins that people had not seen before and wow. conquering rivers in Mexico, uh, El Sumadero Canyon. No one had successfully run that. And he took 16 men as a 29-year-old man right. and ran this river and conquered it that no one else had successfully been able to do. And so th that's my DNA. Mm. And uh, my mom went on a lot of those trips as well. And I think I just got a triple infusion of it because uh, life is a daring adventure or nothing. And if it's not, you either need to find something else or make sure that it is. Right. And I've lived my whole life like that. And my dad started a very successful river running company called Western River Expeditions in the early 1960s. So I spent my summers uh, living in tents and sleeping on the sand. And every summer was running rivers until I went away to, to college. Wow. And so I grew up that way. And it I thought everybody had that much fun during the summer. And <laughs> Apparently they don't, but right. it it continued, and hopefully I passed that on to to my kids and my grandkids and a lot of my friends I know went along and and it it, it changes your life when you have that excitement and that freedom and those adventures on a regular basis. Right. It was it just the summertime that you did this, or did your father and mother take you out of school ever to do any of these exciting adventures? We went up, got out of school all the time. 
one, one year, I think I was in eighth grade, he took us out of school for an entire month. Wow. And, and my parents took us down to Mexico. And there were was a new river to run down there, as mm -hmm. well as hacking through the jungles for the architecture of the Mayan ruins. Okay. And, and then in the wintertime, because we lived where it snowed, we my my dad leased islands. He leased islands in Belize and in Micronesia. And then wow. we would fly over there with paying customers and live on these tiny islands in tents with water beds and scuba dive in wow. places that no one had ever been. And at, at the time it was legal and it was just fine to collect saltwater the fish. Mm -hmm. I brought home sea anemones with their own little uh, habitations of clownfish. And I built these gigantic saltwater aquariums. And I had caught the fish while I was in Micronesia scuba diving in these pristine waters. Wow. And how much of that, I mean, you're a doctor, so you were kind of taken out of school. What now? Do you think that that life experiences that your mother and father gave you really helped level up your education and like maybe really maybe you said man I better try harder because I'm missing some time or like did you were you just not about school but figured that hey the education is going to help me or I've always been curious about that with you because I know that you're out there living l-i-v-i-n I'm saying so just curious I love formal education if I could do anything I would just quit all of my little endeavors right now and just go to school I love learning new things <laughs> But the education and the hands-on of traveling and meeting other cultures and doing things that no one else is doing, you, you can't find that in a book and you can't find that in a classroom. Right. And uh, when I would come home from being gone for a month, my teachers had a handful of assignments, usually write us about your trip and then present it in front of the class or whatever. And it's like, great, no problem. I remember I did take school books with me Okay. And um, I've always been an, an avid and a, and a good student. So okay. it, did, it didn't matter to me that I've been taking out. <clears throat> I actually had an education nobody else had. And I wouldn't have traded it for anything. Wow. That, that's, that, that is, to me, kind of almost a dream childhood, in a <laughs> sense. Because, I mean, you're doing stuff that maybe 1% of the population does through their school age years. And the, the lessons that you learn then about survival, about new things, and how did, much does that really kind of translate into the person that you are now and, and how much of it is led into the people that you're leveling out through your coaching, <laughs> consulting, and your authoring? I think it's at the core of everything. I think having belief in yourself and that belief comes from experiences and from being able to know that you can do it because you've already done it. For example, when I hiked Kilimanjaro, I had trained really hard on some extremely hard hikes. And people were telling me, oh, you're overtraining. And I'm thinking you can never overtrain. Right. And if you get there and you go, uh, this is easier than I thought, which I didn't say. Mm -hmm. We took one of the hardest trails up, which I didn't know about. And people thought I was training for what they call the Coca-Cola Trail which is literally a trail and you're walking up. Well, right. ours, was a, ours was a scramble and a climb. And sometimes you needed uh, both feet and both hands and your knees to sure. get up some of these passes. Right. And I had trained for that thinking I was overtraining. I think the same thing goes for, for example, when you're starting a business. If you're going to be successful in that business, you need to overtrain for it. You need to read everything you can get your hands on. You need to talk to people in the industry. You need to overdo it in understanding that industry or you're going to be lacking and you're going to miss some pieces. It's the same lesson. It, yes. I, 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 with my coaching, I almost, because I was a real estate broker for 26 years and I've been coaching for 10 years and <laughs> It was like my my coach was like, you're born to coach because as a realtor, you're working with people's biggest investment up to that point in their life, most people's biggest investments. And you're not only are you a realtor, but you're like a marriage counselor and you're a babysitter when they're looking at the houses, you're chasing their kids around and everything else, which really she was right. 
as it paid it forward. But I got to the point where I almost overanalyzed it, where I was just reading and accumulating and not taking action. Do you find a lot of people like 100% you're right that you need to overtrain and overdo, but what's that point while you're doing that training that you really have to take that action? I think it comes with awareness. As when you research something, you can go down what is the ultimate rabbit hole and keep researching. And this leads to this, this article leads to this, this leads to this. You can find yourself doing that all day long because you're going, oh, this is so interesting. It's so funny. You can tell yourself mm. that it's meaningful. But if it's not useful and you can't implement it into an action step that's going to move you forward, every action you ask yourself, is this moving the boat forward? If it's not, you're spinning your wheels. And love so it. you ask that question, and then you know when to quit. I love it. And to maybe start on the next phase or facet of the elevation of whatever you're trying to, to, to charge after. So, Doc, your river, the visualization part, visualization part, which is huge to me within my coaching, which within my life, I'm a big, a lot of people say, I'll believe it when I see it. I, I'm kind of the guy that says, I see it when I believe it. Like I actually believe something before you really climbed. Did you actually visualize the climb before? Or were you just kind of flying blind on the climb? Oh, uh, no. Uh, the top of that summit is what you're thinking about every day. And I actually I actually knew what that sign looked like because I <clears throat> my older son had climbed it years before and mm. I saw him at that sign. So I knew what it looked like. Sure. So I knew that that was the goal. And mm. there's a fine line between focusing on that and then knowing that you've got seven days of this horrendous climb and being overwhelmed like that. Or just visualizing, knowing that's your goal, and then just knowing you only have to do today. And then that is only about one step at a time. And wow. so you have the goal, but you don't focus on it because you're going, oh, my gosh, that's so far away. I'll never get there. It's 19,341 feet. Right. You can stop yourself out. So don't. Get your visual and then go, I only have to do today, and here's what I have to do Yeah. Today. I love, love, love that. Like I, we coach inch by inch, it's a cinch, right? By the yard, it's hard, right? It's like, just break it off just a little bit or like even short steps, long vision. You're going to get there if you just keep going. I'm, it's absolutely beautiful. So are you working with companies now with Alpha 81 or give us a little backdrop on what you do there at Alpha 81? I actually do work with companies. My career really has been companies hiring me to start their company so uh, I'll come in and sometimes it's early as, as naming the company and they'll say, we want to do this health and wellness company. Can you get us up and running? So I'll come in and set up systems and processes and mm. logistics and, and distribution and uh, a global expansion and, and product development. And I'll get, and maybe even sales. And then I'll do that for a year or two. And then, at the end of that, it's, it's all ready to go. It's going, it's it's moving ahead. And you go, okay, here's the baby. Don't kill it. And uh, <laughs> then someone else hires me to go somewhere else. And I, I've spent a lot of time moving to other states, yeah. going back and forth. And sure. it that's overrated for a good time, the moving and changing your driver's license every two years. And, yeah, and so <laughs> I've settled in Arizona and I, I plan to stay here. The, the moving thing's done. Done. Yeah, AZ is absolutely but, beautiful, for sure. But, but the the experiences and things that I learned in helping oh other people to set up their companies, which is was the impetus for writing the book Brain to Bank, how to get your idea out of your head and cash in. Right. And there's a section in there, and it's called another episode in the drama series entitled "I Didn't See It Coming," and it's right. all about the things people did or didn't do that almost tank or really tanked their company it's wow. like they didn't do a business plan they had no idea where they're going they just jumped in and got started because that's the fun part you just created a product but you don't have a business because you didn't set up anything that yeah. makes it a business so people know about it and they right. actually can buy it uh so, you just have a little fun little thing because you right. thought it was fun to create so so the the book is all about looking ahead 
and knowing how to do it right and, and aligning yourself with the things that will make you successful. Right. And there's nothing that pisses me off more than having to go back and redo something to get back to where you already are to make sure it's done right. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's beautiful. So when you're maybe starting to work with one of these people that are that want to start a business, it what is your secret sauce, if you don't mind me sharing, when you first maybe sit down in discovery, discovery time that maybe help them really see their most major blind spot? I think one of the biggest blind spots that most people have is the team that they're building. And it's really more about the team being able to execute the plan and than it is about the product itself. And that doesn't mean you don't need a great product or, 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 or a good idea for a service product. Mm. But it means if you don't have, have the team and they don't work well together or they don't know what they're doing or they have terrible communication skills and they alienate everyone that they hire. So they all end up quitting. And there's just a plethora of things like that, that I've seen over the years. Sure. So I think the first thing is to say, you've got this great idea. How will we build a team that is successful that can work together? And Love it. without that, I don't think you have anything. And if you're, I 100% agree. You have to have the the right team in place. <laughs> Trust me, I've been the guy without with the wrong team. And luckily, I had somebody to say, you know what, we need to make some changes. And so maybe if you're in this discovery conversation, Doreen, is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do? As far as having a new client come on board? Yeah, I mean, you're talking and you're, 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 I want feedback. I want questions from the people that I'm, that I'm coaching, but I want them to ask me, so where do you see me in this amount of time or what is this going to get me? Is there any good question when you're starting to work with somebody that you wish they would ask you, but never do? I think it's the one that has to do with self-awareness and it's mm. the question that says, what do you see about me and my leadership skills? Or the lack of that I am not seeing that I need to make sure that I implement. Yes. That changes everything. Yes. That and what it does, that a question like that would be like anti-ego, right? They're like just laying it exactly. out and saying, listen, D or, or Riv, River, let, let's see where I'm lacking. And I own it. And I know my weak spots. That, that was very much pointed out by a couple of coaches and I've had to clean those up and some of them I still struggle with, but that that's okay. So with your creative writing background in storytelling, especially is there, how do you feel that maybe storytelling can be utilized to effectively, effectively communicate a business vision and maybe like in, get more say customer engagement? Well, if it had to do with customer engagement, then I, I think those stories really come from others. They they come in the form of, I bought this product and this is how it changed my life, or I implemented this service into my business yeah. and this is what it has done for it. I think those kind of stories come from others. Otherwise, it's just these bragging rights on a founder who's hoping to get more clients. Right. So it needs to come authentically from others. Of it, yeah, I, I, that's that's beautiful because it, there, you have to get the feedback. I used to want to run everything myself and just everybody follow. It was the military thing in me. I've been in hard target situations and experience. Like I'll get us through this, but I was taught that the, the smartest person in the room is the one that hires someone smarter than them to do certain things, and that's why you're brought on because <laughs> you've been there, you've navigated this these waters. And that's beautiful. So. What are some of your recommendations for someone that wants to start a business, get fired up for making sure that they hire the right talent? I think the first question is one that you ask yourself as a potential founder, and it's this, why do I want to do this? And that seems like a simple question, but it usually goes about five deep. So you would be asking yourself, why do I want to do this? Well, because I want the money. Well, why do you want the money? Well, it, it's because my husband was in a construction accident and he can't work and mm. we need the money. 
what do you need the money for? Well, I need it for all the regular things you can think of, but my kids need a clothes that they feel good about wearing to school because they're being made fun of because people are leaving them in a paper bag on our doorstep and they're hand-me-downs and they're embarrassed by that. Why does that matter to your kids? Because I want to build their self-esteem. Mm. Well, now you got a reason, right? It's not about the money. It's about mm. helping your kids to feel better about who they are yeah. so they can do better That's at awesome. school and feel included. And so it goes four or five levels deep. <clears throat> so what is your why? Wow. Because when things are really difficult, and they always are when you're starting your own business, yeah. you're hanging on to that because why? I'm doing that for my kids so they feel better about themselves the rest of their life. Right. And then you get up and you, whatever it is, you handle it. Right. That's that's awesome. That I was taken about nine layers deep before when I about my why, right? And I don't have children, so being fifty one years old is probably not going to happen. And that it, it kind of bothers me a little bit in a sense that I didn't. I mean, I'm going to live with it. Choices are made, and medical issues as well. But I, I kind of look at it. I was asked, and it finally came out to service, love, and legacy are kind of the things that really for me. It's like legacy is super important. I don't have the legacy, but I have to leave mine in a certain way. So that's where we, were, my coach worked with me and I worked with my clients as well, really to build out that legacy because legacy is really part of everybody's world, right? It's just, it's just different things. So what is your legacy? My legacy changes because when I have a project, for example, Brain to Bank, I just gave people 30 years of experience in one book and it Oof. goes from A to Z and it says, if you do this, this, and this, and this, you'll read a chapter and then it'll, it'll have action steps at the end of every chapter. Love so it. you're not just learning, you're actually doing something with it without yeah. the action. You just have knowledge. So you want a company or not do these steps. You work your way through that. Maybe I've just changed a million lives and, and it has changed their lives in a way that they were in charge of it. And right. they always wanted to have their own company. They always wanted the income. This is what their reason is for doing it. And and that's a type of legacy. Yeah, I yeah, have absolutely. a couple other projects I'm working on now that are another legacy. And I don't yeah. think it's just one. I think it's several. And when you have kids, that's one type. Yeah. But when you're helping other people for other reasons, yeah, that's a whole different kind of legacy. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's so true as well. I love it. I love it. So have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Several times. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's get that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the, the double juice, the 22-year-old Doreen, okay, or River. And what kind of knowledge nuggets would you drop on her? Not to change anything, because your life is pretty freaking great, okay? But maybe to help her shorten the learning curve or blast through maybe just a little bit quicker. Are you asking me, what is your density? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you are my density. I mean, you destiny. Are my, density. <laughs> my density has changed over the years and I have felt and been very <laughs> dense myself uh, along the way. If, if I had to do it over again, I would do my education different. Okay. Instead of getting a degree in creative writing, and then I went back and got another one in criminal justice because I was going to go to law school and didn't. Mm -hmm. I thought that would placate the fact that I was didn't go to law school. It's it's never gotcha. subsided. I still may go. Gotcha. Uh, and then I, I get this uh, master's and a PhD all the way to the very end. Sure. And but I should have done it differently for where I am now. And I would have uh, gotten a, a, my creative writing for sure, but I would have doubled it up with business. Okay. Then I would have gone and gotten an, an MBA, JD combination right after that. Okay. Then I would have gone to film school because my love is in film production and Ooh. storytelling. Yeah. And I've done a fair amount of that on a very small scale. Okay. But then I would have been up and running and then I would have had my kids because okay. <laughs> then I would have done all that other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And and I probably would have been hopefully a very successful filmmaker. So right. now I'm on a smaller scale where I'm helping others to be a small, small kind of type 
filmmaker sure in, in this new business that i'm creating so i love that anyway, it, it's all of that and that it's all about education and timing yeah it's it's not about doing the wild crazy things so i think maybe i would even step that up and do more of that yeah <laughs> i would i would keep well, I wouldn't trade my childhood for anything. I wouldn't either if I were you, 100%. That that just sounded amazing to see things that very low percentage of the world has laid eyes on, right? And, and just, that's, wow, that's wow. So how do you want your dash remembered then? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and death date. How do you want that da dash to remember it on your tombstone? I always tell my kids, here's what I want is it just says, I'm too busy. I don't have time to die. And I tell my kids all of that all the time. <clears throat> I said, I've got so many things on my list to do. Yeah. Um, but I really think it, it really is. It's just Helen Keller's quote. Yeah. Life is an adventure. I get up every day and I can't wait to get into my office because I have the most fun things ever to do every day. And yeah. work is more fun than fun. Yeah. And it's because I choose the projects that just in, ignite me. Right. That I have passion for. And I'm in my zone of genius from the things that I choose. So I'm not trying to figure it all out and it doesn't feel stressful. It just feels fun. Right. And I think every day should be like that. Absolutely. It's, it's to me... People, I, I get asked a lot, well, for you, what's your definition of success? I'm just like, live a life of options and not obligations. I want to live. I'm blessed to do what I love in the service of people that love what I do. Like people that see me speak, they're like, he loves this, right? They're like, and, and I love to really, if I can help somebody in any way, shape or form, that's what my why is. I want to be helping. I want to be in service, service, love and legacy, right? And so I, I do what you love in the service of people who love what you do. And that's just my motto in a sense, right? So is there, tell me something that people mo might misunderstand the most about River. Oh, I, I don't know. There's some complications there where I'm concerned because I have so many things uh, that, uh, I that I love uh, to do. Right, um, right. I think one of the things I do is I get so wrapped around what I have to do that day and task oriented. I forget to spend time and to tell people how much I love and appreciate them and yeah. the fact that my friends and families and, and that, that can get dropped to the background because there's this right. big checklist every day. And I'm becoming more aware of the fact that I do that and I need to slow down and stop and keep the relationships going it's 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 that analogy of the crystal balls and the rubber balls right right <laughs> the rubber balls are the ones that bounce and come back up and that's frankly that's work that's that's some of the things that you you can get back and start over the crystal right. ball family and relationships and things that if they you drop it and break they break right and you can't put them back together so i try to keep that top of mind that's beautiful. That was very transparent. And thank you. And so I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. You 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 kind of you didn't give away your age, but the generation that you came up with, and if you're like traveling as a young woman, young girl in the 60s, okay, how did you find the glass ceiling of being a female working through all of this to affect you? I I never noticed it. It's okay. I, I thought you were going to answer it that way. You just bump right up at the top of it, and then you just crash through it, and you keep going. Yeah. I, my dad had one son and six six daughters. I'm the oldest of the six girls. And I said to him one time, because he owned a big river running company, and women were not boatmen at the time. Right. And women, women didn't have sports teams that they played in, and mm -hmm. none, none of that, right? And I just said, Dad, I said, do you feel bad you didn't have more boys? You know, and he said, heavens no. He said, my girls can do anything a boy can do. Hell yeah. And there there you go. There right. was never, there was never a line for me. Right. I, I played basketball with the boys at recess when I was in elementary school because it was so much more fun than hopscotch and jump yeah. rope. And, sure. Yeah. And so I didn't think there were any rules about not playing. So I just went. 
Love it. And I've thought that my whole life. There's no rules. There, the rules are whatever you set up for yourself. Exactly. And then those are the ones you can even break if you want to. <laughs> if and need and be. you should. <laughs> Doreen, what is your definition of a life well lived? I think it's really more complicated than one line. I, I think a life well lived is number one, staying healthy so that you can live it and enjoy it with quality. Yeah. I think that's critical. And without good health, you don't have anything. But with yeah. great health, you can do anything. Yes. And I really believe in that. So I spend time making sure that I do that. Then everything else is really, secondly, is about your relationships. And and particularly for me, it's about my family first, and then my, my friends secondly, and then my business associates. They matter. And right. if you want to make something of that you need to make sure they know that they matter right and then it's how many people can you help yes yes and and how and how will you do that and right. and how you do it changes you may do something one year or do it for two or three and and then you choose to do something else but how many lives can you make better and that seems to be what most days are made of how Love do it. i move that forward yeah. And you don't work. Like I don't work. I'm blessed to have like structure my life where I just don't work, man. It's like, I, I, I was told when I was showing you a job is something you do. A business is something that you grow and you grow it through providing stellar service to the people that need it. And that's what I've just really let, laid it all on since I was 25 years old, I guess like 26 years ago or something like that. And it's just carried me four years, man. Just being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And that's just, that's a beautiful time to shine today. Podcast varsity squad. We are back in river. You and I will meet up. I'm really certain, probably pretty soon. Cause I do like Arizona in the winter time. So and we'll maybe discuss a few of these. It might take us 15, 20 minutes on each one of these questions, but today you've got five seconds with no explanations, just the answer. And they can all be answered that way. You ready to level up? Level up. Let's do it. All right, River, what is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Do what you love and do what you're good at. Yes. So share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. I write down everything the night before that I'm going to do in the morning so I don't spend time wondering where to start. I know yes. where to start. Love it. Love it. You see me kind of walking down the street. And man, like Fergie looks like he's in his doldrums a little bit. What book? might you hand me that really like hit home with you that really got you motivated or maybe you shifted that mindset if it's an entrepreneur friend i will give them the book that is called creativity inc creativity it's inc. about okay. pixar and it's oh, amazing. okay love it love it what is your most commonly used emoji when you text if any Say say it again, Scotty. What's what's the most commonly used emoji you use when you text, if any? A heart. Okay, awesome. Nicknames growing up? Door. Door. All right, love it. <laughs> love it. So tell me about a hidden talent or superpower that you have that nobody knows about until now. The fact that I can come up with an idea and turn it into a book in a matter of a very short period of time. I love that. Chess checkers or Monopoly? Monopoly. Awesome. Headline for your life? Helen Keller's quote. There life we is go. an adventure or nothing. Love it. Any superstitions? Not really. No? Gotcha. Go to ice cream flavor. Oh, it's complicated. Probably pistachio fudge um, almond i am not going Heather. to lie to you i literally wrote as a guest pistachio on here I that's swear. pistachio almond fudge it, it, <laughs> it's a baskin robbins that's awesome there's a sandwich called the door river give me what's on that sandwich build a sandwich for me turkey breast and pesto and okay. fresh basil and probably a provolone and some lettuce and maybe my homemade pickles. Love it. So you got access to a time machine that can take you back to any time where you can spend a day. Okay. When would you go back to? 1830s on the plains with the Comanches. Ooh, 
That'd be fun. Actually, it'd be fun. Although there's a kegger in 1989 that I went to. It was a really fun party. Just kidding. <laughs> so favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time or money to? Well, right now it doesn't really exist. There's one, there's a kidney disease called IGA and no mm -hmm. money is being spent to really actually figure that out. Okay. And I'd like to do that. I want to start that foundation. Love it. Love it. Last question. You can elaborate on this one, but what is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? It's the bridge between 65 and 75. Okay. Very cool. Best storytellers ever in that era. Yes. I yes. mean, ever. When I'm, when I'm editing a podcast, I don't edit it. I, I'm sorry, Donnie, Tiffany. Like, like they do that part, but I actually listen. I build the notes on it. I always have in the background, like like a sixty, late sixties, seventies, like Croce or somebody that's telling a story in it, and that makes sense for you because you're such a storyteller. I mean, I love the eighties just because of everything that new happened in that time with the invasion of rap and and you you two from Ireland and whatever. But like the seventies is like my mom. She passed away in 2019. I like to have that on because she'd always have the stuff on in the background. So that's awesome. So River, how can we find you, love? I think, first of all, let's also let everybody know there is a free book waiting for them. If they go to riversfreebook.com, mm -hmm. the book is called Working Together Alone. It's actually an expanded version of Chapter 7 out of Brain to Bank. Mm -hmm. And it's really about how to hire virtual assistants globally to get them to work for you overnight while you're sleeping at a cheaper price and make your life easier. So are you so, my producer now? Because I had that written down to go to, but how can we find <laughs> you? You can find me at alpha81.com. So rivers at alpha81.com. Uh, send me a note. I'd love to hear from anybody. Love it. And give us that site again that they can go to for the free part. Rivers, R-I-V-E-R-S, riversfreebook.com. You can it. also uh, message me from there. Love it. I love it. And let's talk a little bit about Brain to Bank. You, you touched on it during the interview, but what? let's get to the infancy of it and also the people that you're really looking to reach with the book. The book is for anyone who's ever had a great idea. And I find as I speak to more and more people, most people have at least one great idea, yes. but they don't know where to start. Yes. Otherwise, they would love to see their idea be in the hands of other people to benefit from it. I love that. So, so the book is a culmination of learning how to help people do this over the last 30 years. And it's what to do. And it's more importantly, what not to do. And it's very sequential. Start here, do this next, do this next. At the end of the book, you should have your product and service into the market. And it's, it's just hands-on. It's fun to read. It's got a ton of stories in it. Mm -hmm. And I had a great time writing it, but I would love to think that it actually helps people. So people who are, are buying this book, when you get to the end of that journey and your product or service is up and running, I would love to hear that that book helped you to do that. It's mm. the only reason to write it. Love it. I love it. You're such a so intentional giver. And I love that. And squad, I'm going to do a three book giveaway to the first three people that is on time to shine today's dime. The first three people that put in river in any of our social I don't care if it's Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. If you put River, I'll know you've listened this far and I'll make sure a book is mailed out to you. And also don't forget about riversfreebook.com, which I knew about that. I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm going to look at it now, River. So I'm going to get into that. And if you do me one last, oh, also you can text that River to 561-440-3830. That, that's a way to do it as well. But River, please leave me, do me a solid, leave me one last knowledge nugget we can take with us, internalize, and take action on. It's it's really this. If I can do this, you can do this. I'm no <laughs> different than anybody listening. If you want to do it, decide to do it, decide how you're going to do it, and then go do it. It's really that simple to lay it out and then just start. Love it. And Spud, we had a really fun conversation, also kind of a free masterclass from my really good friend, Doreen, who I, we all love here as River. And her father was a world explorer type. The DNA was really already embedded into River 
be, probably before she was born. And she just really took that and ran. She lived a life that was daring, a, really a daring adventure as she was younger. I would love to see a diary from back in that time squad to really see the stuff that she went through. And she's also someone, this is what kind of threw me off is that she's someone that loves formal education. Because a lot of people that are out exploring and stuff, they hate education. I love that she married those two. And that's why she's successful in what she's doing with helping people from an academic side and also from a calculated, and I say calculated, risk side. And she reminds us that Action comes with a, awareness. So you have to be asking yourself, as you're kind of building a company, is this really moving forward? You need to overtrain and overdo what you're really, really passionate about. If you know your why, the, the doing part is a lot easier. But again, you really have to do a deep dive, dig in, and like overtrain on it. So, so you're not getting hit with blind spots that are there that can, can really slow you down, right? And my friend River, she's really kind of planting trees she's never going to sit in the shade of. I love it. She's always creating. She's always putting it out there. She does things for the intention, not the attention. She's not out, look at me, look at me, look at me. Now, she's going and doing stuff like kick-ass stuff, like hot, climbing a mountain and doing stuff that a lot of us probably will never do. But she's not out there saying, look at me, look at me. She just goes out and lives her life as an adventure. And she not big on missed opportunities. So if she's all about it, she gets after it. And that's what she wants you to do as well. And you have to love what you're good at. If you don't, get the hell out. Just go do something else. Even if you have to work for somebody else, love what you're good at. And she reminds us that if she can do it, really anybody can. She's a human being. Actually, she's a human be doing. She's more of a human doing than a human being. She's a little mix of both. And that's what I love about her. And make sure you pick up her book. And anyone that put River in there, the first three, I'm going to buy a book for you. But pick up the book because it really will help you creatively unleash and, and really grow your passion in your company. And that's what my good friend River does. She levels up her health. She levels up her wealth. She's absolutely beautiful. She's earned a varsity squad letter here at Time to Shine Day. Thank you so much, River, for coming on. And again, I absolutely love your guts. Thanks, Berg.